Johnny5 here, guys, and today we are talking about the latest news, and this is a public service announcement about the HDOs. And what is this announcement? If you are a shopper or a buyer of the HDOs, you may be wanting to know about what is the Pixel Screen of Death. That's right, guys, the Pixel Screen of Death. Um, now, the origins of that type of a phrase come from Microsoft's famous debacle where they had the blue screen of death where every time your computer crashed, you would get a terrible blue screen. Now, for you slightly younger guys, you may remember being a teenager and, oops, your Xbox 360 stopped working with the red ring of death flashing on the screen. And now, um, unfortunately, the new Fat Sharks many users are reporting being plagued by a terrible worse than terrible a heinous um bug in which you know i can't really show you this i've tried to get the camera up in there but you really just can't do it uh, because of how this is curved i'm sure bardwell or somebody is going to do this very soon but just to give you a description on what's happening is on many of these fat shark hdo goggles there is a row of bad pixels, or they're not bad, they're just fuzzy. They're going along the very bottom um, portion of the screen on both sides. And what it really looks like is it looks like if your goggles has a horizontal line of interference, uh, and it's about five to 10 pixels tall. So they kind of just fuzz around in there and it stays on forever. And so it's a distraction. I've I had heard about it, and unfortunately, my set of HDOs is affected by this issue. Now, Fat Shark has responded fairly quickly, and yesterday afternoon they released a patch, a firmware update that you could apply with via the SD card in order to fix this issue. But one of the within minutes, a user reported back that this update actually defeated and broke his DVR functionality. Now this is completely crazy. Now we're waiting to see if more reports of this come in, but it does seem like this is the case. Oscar Liang has also reported that his DVR functionality was destroyed by applying this update. So I'm glad I was paying attention. Um, it is definitely annoyance, the pixel screen of death, but losing my DVR functionality, especially before this weekend's event, would be absolutely unacceptable. Now, unlike some of the other people in the community, I don't necessarily feel that the HDO versus the HD3 is just a runaway defeat. I think it's a little bit closer than a lot of people are saying, in my opinion, um, so I'm still kind of going back and forth on that. And my review for that is really going to be coming later. I'm waiting to do a more comprehensive analysis and get some more data to see which one I really like better before I just kind of throw my initial impressions. But I wanted to get this video out for you guys to warn anybody that's shopping for this. Now, why is this an issue? Why, you know, leave Fat Shark alone? Why is everyone picking on Fat Shark? Well, let's put it to you this way, guys. I have a 4K Sony television in my living room right now of a fairly large size. Now, I bought that because whenever I play a game or I watch a game or I watch a movie, which I do quite frequently, I want the best color representation, resolution, and picture possible. I want to spend that limited time that I have to do those activities that I love to do and I want to experience them in the fullest. And that is why many of us are jumping on the Fat Shark HDO. Because it does have the best colors. Now, what my perspective is in comparing the HDO to the HD3 isn't so much is it the best color viewing experience. My um, goal for this is to find what is going to be best for me racing. And um, I want to know if that extra color and contrast allows you to race more effectively versus the extra size of the HD3. So it's going to be, can you pick apart obstacles and gates better? Now, from what I've seen, uh, it is true, but is it a large enough um, difference to make that $100 price point difference worth it? And that's what I'm really going to be shooting for. So look for that to follow. But for today, Fat Shark, Pixel Screen of Death is unacceptable. 
I do really appreciate that they put out an update so fast, but the update was not fully tested. Now me, I've been working in the IT industry for over a decade, and I know that when you're under the crime, when you have a go live, which this release of the product was essentially comparative to a go live uh, in a support um, structure way. And so they had a major bug in this. And so they had to act quickly, but unfortunately their testing uh, parameters um, that took place in order to make sure that this software that was going to be delivered to users wasn't tested fully. The basic functions of this goggle were not tested before this update came out um, on all the different models. And that's something that you want to do. Now, for these Fat Shark goggles, there's only about five or six basic functions that they can even do. So come on, guys. We appreciate the quick update and the quick response, but you have to do your testing better. Um, you know, you guys are a technology company, so you have to hire implement and utilize the proper project management procedures you have to utilize the proper the proper testing techniques testing scripts you need to have multiple people running these uh in multiple sessions um, before you release something like that so i am not going to fix my pixel screen of death version of the hdos that i have it's annoying yes but i cannot live without my dvr absolutely not so Please, Fat Shark, fix this. Anybody that's wondering about this, that's what it is. So if you do have the pixel screen of death and you do need your DVR, you may want to think twice. I'm going to put Oscar Liang's um, link below. Does this mean that we should write Fat Shark off? No. But let's get real, guys. We all give Fat Shark a pass because they never had the power button. They never had the new features. They use the same case. Why are they doing that? They're doing it because they can maximize their profits that way. They're leveraging good business practices, which allows them to utilize the same molds and take advantage of economies of scale as they manufacture more and more and more of these. But those savings don't seem to be passed on to the consumer. Now, partially that's because they're including better technology, but come on, we got to stop. We got to draw a line somewhere. They can't keep getting a pass for stuff like this. I wouldn't give Sony a pass for this. And I am considering this product to be just on the same premium. And so I want to hold them to the same standards that I would a Sony product. If my Sony 4K television shipped to me and I unboxed it and had two people help me lift the damn thing onto the entertainment center and it had a pixel screen of death, 10 to, you know, 5 to 10 pixels at the bottom of the screen were flickering it would be unacceptable it would have been shipped back immediately but you know what but even me i'm thinking oh oh fat shark <laughs> they're probably a small operation let's give them a break um and so i wasn't really going to say anything about it but once i found out they put out the patch that is breaking people's goggles uh dvr functionality it's just not good so please respond don't write them off yet. This is just meant to be an announcement. I'm confident that they will fix it. Hopefully this is going to be a learning experience for them to implement proper testing procedures. Now, nobody loves testing. Being in the IT world, I don't love it. It's not the funnest thing to do. But in order to avoid your customers going through this type of stuff, you just have to do it. So that's it for today, guys. Um, just a quick um, announcement. Everyone have a good weekend.